Verification is a process. There isn't necessarily a recipe or a set of steps that you can follow to verify any content that you find online. It's about asking a bunch of questions and trying to piece as many of the clues together as possible to get your answer. And we normally approach verification by asking five main questions or the five pillars of verification. So number one is provenance. Are you looking at the original piece of content? Remember how easy it is to share things on social and sometimes tracing back how something was shared to try and find the original person who published it can tell you a lot about that piece of content. Number two, if you manage to find the first person who put it on the internet, who are they? What do they do for a job? Can you get in touch? Can you ask any questions? Number three, when the actual content was posted. Four is location, so where it was created. And number five is motivation, so why was this piece of content captured? Let's look at an example. We found this particular tweet on the 9th of March earlier this year, and it has it's a video of a person running away from two people in a hazmat suit, and they're screaming, help, 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 and both the text of the tweet and the text in Arabic in the video say an Italian corona patient escaped from hospital. Now, at the time when we found it, this tweet didn't have that much engagement. So if you look down here, it has three retweets and 19 likes. But the person who posted it, the account who posted it, has quite a big following on Twitter. So we thought it would be important to investigate it just in case it started to get traction and we needed to step in and provide some answers. The very first thing that you always should do when verifying content online is archive it, back it up. Tweets can be deleted, blog posts can be taken down, Instagram accounts can be suspended. And in the meantime, you lose the material that you were using to investigate. So in this particular case, I use Wayback Machine to back up this tweet so that myself and other people can go back and refer to it just in case if it got taken down. Step number two, I went to a tool called Invid, which is a video verification plugin for Google Chrome that has a ton of different useful tools, including a Twitter search and some metadata readers. But in this particular case, I was interested in the video analysis tool. The video analysis tool lets you put in a link for a Twitter video or a YouTube link, and it'll analyze the account that posted it, give you some useful information, and then find a thumbnail that you can reverse image search to see if this video has existed online before. So this is the analysis it gave me of the account. It tells me the name, uh, the location listed, the, um, whether it's a verified user, the number of followers. Sometimes these can be clues. So for example, if an account is claiming to um, have existed for a really long time, but it was actually just created last week, that starts to set off your alarm bells. When it came to the reverse image search part of it, it gave me this particular thumbnail that I was gonna send to Google Image, um, reverse search, Yandex, and Tinai. It's important to search across different search engines because each of them have different algorithms and they look at little different parts of the internet. So sometimes one of them won't find a lot, but a lot of them, another one will. And again, piecing the puzzle together is what's important. So Tenai only found it in one place, an Iranian video sharing website called apparat.com. Um, and then later that would make sense because I started to find it across all sorts of Instagram and Twitter accounts tweeting and um, publishing in Farsi, which is what people speak in Iran. And it's because this website picked it up and then everyone started sharing it. And you can see already this was published on the 1st of March of 2020. So the 9th of March version that I saw on Twitter wasn't the first time this has existed online. Then Yandex. Yandex found a bunch of different examples on Twitter that were sharing this video um, and, and sort of like Twitter aggregating websites like Twibbler and Twitter Trend, Trends Map. Um, and that was able to give me a bunch of other spaces where it had been shared online. Google Images um, found it on 9gag, which is a website that people use to share funny memes and content. A bunch of other Twitter accounts, TikTok, Instagram, Reddit, and different places. So what I did was I went through and opened as many of these links as I could, trying to see if I could find, number one, the original person who posted it, the oldest version I could find, and also the highest resolution video. Because some of these are really pixelated because they've been reshared and recropped. And I wanted to find the best resolution possible to see if I could read some of the text in the either street signs or were there any clues that I could use to figure out where this video was from. And eventually I found this other version from what looks like Snapchat because of this strap that's in the middle of the video. And the important thing about this version is that it was the clearest one that I could find. I'm not sure if it translates to how you guys are seeing the screen, but when I downloaded it, I, it actually let me read some of the text in the video and that was super important. So what do we know so far? 
people are claiming the video is from different locations, so not just Italy. There are versions online that I could find dating back to at least 2015. Um, it has been posted in websites for memes and GIFs and funny content. Most of the versions are low quality, which means that it's been shared, downloaded, reshared, reposted. And we can know for certain this is not from March 2020. Now, this might be enough information for you to then say, you know what, we're not going to run it, right? Because I can't, it's not from this year, it's not a corona patient, and then it doesn't really matter where it came from because I know what it's not, right? And that might be enough for your editor, and a simple search through Invid would have gotten you there. But we can dig deeper. Using that version that I found from Snapchat that gives you actually a lot more of information, I started to pause the video at different times to read, try and read the signs and get some visual clues to geolocate it. Geolocating is figuring out where something was created by using visual clues in images and videos. So for example, in this frame, you can see that it's a car park in a corner of a street where there's some street lights, that the billboard at the back says 25C, like, like how Americans write sense, so maybe it's in the US. Then they run past this really colorful building in a corner, so could I eventually find that on Google Street View? Because it's a super distinctive looking building. What are the street signs like, and do they look like a specific country? Um, then they run past this other building that has a, a business in the front. I don't know if you can see it, but that clearly to me reads D apostrophe M something, and then an S, and then you and I like uni. Um, and you can also see the kinds of cars that people are driving. So they're bigger, not really European looking cars. Um, and the side of the road that they're driving on means that at least they're not in the UK. And last but not least, when at the end of the video, when they run past the street, there is this specific signpost that has a, um, like a sign on the lamppost. And if you, um, blow that up, it, that clearly to me reads Keen, K-E-A-N. So I did what we all do when we have a question, I typed it into Google. And if you Google Keen, the first result that came up was this, Keen University, and it showed me this logo. And it looks exactly like, well, not exactly, but close enough to the logo of the sign on the lamppost. So maybe it's Keen University. So then I typed that into Google Maps to figure out where is Keene University. And it turns out it's in um, Union, New Jersey in the United States. Union, New Jersey doesn't look like a big town. So do I just go about maybe searching all the parking lots? and looking at them in Street View to see if I can find that specific one. Just using Google Street View to explore and walk around. Do I search for that colorful building on the corner? Or maybe the advert that had 25C? Or what about the business? D apostrophe M something, uni, and then an end of a word. The good thing about looking for businesses as clues is that most of them tend to be listed on Google. They have websites, they have Facebook accounts. They want people to find them to get their clientele and their custom. So I started thinking, how can I finish this sentence? DM, unicorn, uniform, unisex. Maybe unisex, because it's like a hairdresser's, like a place where they cut your hair. So I went to Google again and typed D apostrophe unisex, Union, New Jersey. And there it is. Demorrow's unisex is a hair salon listed on Facebook um, on 292 Morris Avenue, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Now. Elizabeth and Union, are they the same thing? Are they different neighborhoods in the same place? Let's find out. I took that address and plotted it onto Google Maps and actually found the other thing that I could verify, which was that really colorful building on the corner. And if you use Google Maps to look around, behind us there's a car park. So I found the exact place. If you really wanted to be super sure, now that we have a specific place, you could do some good old fashioned journalism and check the CDC's website for reported cases in um, New Jersey. You could even contact the local authorities to so call the New Jersey Department of Health and ask. So there's always analog ways of backing up your digital investigations.